707 sequel. Great knife. Price. If you got the money, if I had the cash, I'd buy it. Oh, it's totally, dude. I'd buy it. If I had the cash, I'd just throw it around, and I'm like, what am I going to do with all this cash? <laughs> Big mountain of cash in my house taking up space. What am I going to do? I guess I'll get some more 707 sequels <laughs> down at Blade HQ. Hey guys, Late Boy Scout here with Ben from Blade HQ. How are we doing, Scout? I'm doing great, man. And here we are at Blade HQ, shooting kind Mecca. of a yeah, man. This is the one of my favorite place, favorite places to visit in the whole wide world. My mom's house, close second. <laughs> so um, today we're doing kind of an interesting, kind of a weird video, but I think you guys are gonna find this sort of interesting. We might have some angry comments down in the <laughs> comment section below, but the theme of this video is basically this. There are a number of knives out there that you guys have asked me to look at and potentially review that I've looked at and decided, no, I don't want that. I don't want to buy that knife. I don't want to carry that knife. I don't want to spend that money. I don't want that knife. So we thought we'd take some time today, show you some of those knives, just a few of them, and talk about why I wouldn't and sometimes, in some cases probably wouldn't, but might given the right circumstances buy that knife. And I, w I want to stress, I mean, I sell knives, guys. These are high quality knives, and I I'll be like, frank and honest with you, they're knives that I just won't buy for particular reasons. It doesn't mean it's a bad knife, it's just not what I need when I'm looking for it. Let's stress that, that this is not a hit on quality, this is really a hit on, talk about personal preference. Yeah. Again, everybody that's watching, you might roll into the comment section and say, well, you know, my personal preference is that you suck, and that's, that's <laughs> fine. But, um, <clears throat> you know, this is a matter of personal preference. Everybody's got their own, their own taste, and what they like and dislike, and okay. it's just us talking about things we do and don't like, and why we might or might not buy something. So let's get into some specific knives here and start talking. So we've got a row of knives here. As I said before, these are some that I'm a little wishy-washy about, probably wouldn't buy. Let's start from this end, since it's closest to the camera. There's the Cold Steel Recon 1. This is the regular size Recon. And a lot of you guys love this knife. I tell you what, I like the way this knife feels in hand. It's a real robust knife, definitely is. Part of why I probably wouldn't buy this is the robustness, the size. I'm a little adverse to knives that are really fat in my pocket. Now this is not the fattest knife you can get in your pocket, but uh, it's kind of getting there as far as this dimension is concerned. And that's one of those dimensions that I'm a little bit concerned about, and so I try to keep this dimension kind of, kind of on the slim side. Uh, this one I'm also very, very concerned about. I try to keep that fairly slim, um, and this is not a bad one as far as that uh, width is concerned. But as far as this dimension here is concerned, it's a little bit more than I could handle and would, would want to put, keep in my pocket. Another thing about the Cold Steel Recon knives, they are priced a little high for me considering what you get. Now, AUS-8 A steel is good steel, but I don't think it's um, on par with the price you're paying. That's kind of my feeling, and I, you guys may disagree there. Go ahead and say so in the comments section if you do. I feel like the G10 and AUS-8 A combination, again, a good knife in the $50 range, $40, $50 range, I'd be all over this knife. But when we're talking about, I think it's 70 or so, is that correct? I think so, yeah. Something like 70, maybe a little more than that, 75. Um, it's a little bit much for me, especially considering this factor right here, which is Taiwan made. Come on, can't we get that? You know, a good knife like this made in the USA, but that's one reason why I'm not real, real excited about the Cold Steel Recon 1. Now here's one that I've had some requests for. This is the medium. G10 Espada, also by Cold Steel. Now, some of you guys might have been interested in seeing the large Espada or the extra large Espada. I can tell you right now, those ones are way out of the ballpark for me. No way I'd be interested in carrying one of those knives. So here's the medium. If, if I were to carry any of the Espadas, this is probably the one. But I'm still not too excited about it for a couple of reasons. Some of the same reasons that I talked about in the recon, only exaggerated. Look at that dimension. <laughs> Look at that width. Man, that is a beefy, beefy knife in the pocket. And also, look how much of that will stick out of your pocket. All right, so that's kind of a deal breaker for me. Kind of is. Then we talk about, uh, once again, the construction on it. It's kind of the same construction as the Recon series. 
G10, a little bit thinner, or is it? Possibly a little bit thinner in this dimension because it does have stainless steel liners in it, at least uh, partially stainless steel liners. Um, but we get some of the same sort of weight, some of the same sort of beefiness in pocket, and that really, really big broad blade that in certain applications would be really advantageous, but on an everyday carry basis, just couldn't do it. And that's one reason, again, with price point and considering that it's made in Taiwan, just not real crazy about the G10 Espadas. My, my thoughts on cold steel, I, until about a month ago, I never would have even considered purchasing any sort of cold steel. However, because I, I felt like the, the marketing hype on them was, was uh, disproportionate. <coughs> However, after seeing our latest field tests and seeing what those things can do, I'm impressed. Like, honestly, I would buy a cold steel now simply because of performance. As far as size and dimensions, again, I'm, I'm kind of a scout here. It's, they're big, they're bulky, they're thick. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that's the kind of knife you like, they're perfect for you. I, I personally, I carry a griptilian, a little mini grip yeah. over here. And uh, I like a small knife. I like the three inch blade. I like just not a lot of weight in my pocket, that sort of thing. So, I mean, it's all about what you're looking for. Look at the size comparison between these. I do not want this big of a, a knife in my pocket. That's just me, it's personal preference, so. Moving on to some Spydercos. I like Spydercos a lot. And here's the Police G10, a knife that is beautiful in my, in my opinion. It's really, really nice looking. Just gorgeous, I mean, great finish on that blade. You know, beautiful G10, really nicely rounded, really well put together knife. Made in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. VG10 steel. Just about everything you want in a good, solid knife is right here. Back lock, no problem with it. Spider hole is nice and big, easy opening. A lot of great qualities with the uh, Spyderco Police G10. Why am I a little adverse to this knife? Probably just the size. Just the size, that's probably the only reason why right there. I think it's a four plus inch blade. If I'm not mistaken, that is a big, long blade. Let's compare that to the Recon. So it's, it's even longer than that Recon. Okay, so even bigger. Now, Compared to the size of my arm, Scout. Oh, the size of your arm. Yeah, it's about the same size as your arm. <laughs> about the same. <laughs> not the same thickness, though, not, of course. Not, not nearly the same thickness, no. No. Now, other dimensions on it, look at that width. It's very good. The closed... The close size on it, that's not bad at all. In all, most all pockets that I would uh, wear this in, that's really good. Uh, the pocket clip could be a little deeper for me. Still not a deal breaker. It really just comes down to size and kind of price. I'm trying to remember what the price is on this. I just looked it up. It is one, 160, no, 152 on Blade HQ currently. 152. Okay, for that, if you can find it, you can get a paramilitary too. So I would prefer that knife over this one. Good luck finding it. Yeah, good luck finding it. <laughs> so again, this is all about personal preference. You may absolutely love the Police G10 and it fits into your pocket and to the roll that you put it in really, really well. But for me, not so much. Now let's talk about the Spyderco Junior. And when I got this knife in my hands, I was almost convinced. I was almost won over. It's a really nice knife and it actually feels pretty nice in hand. Great big blade. I believe this is also VG, VG10, which it is. And I believe it's also made in Japan. Okay, so we get a lot of Spyderco's hallmark qualities in the Spyderco Junior. It's an excellent, excellent knife as far as construction and materials are, uh, are concerned. One thing that makes it almost a deal breaker for me and one reason I probably won't be picking this one up now, I do love the compression lock that Spyderco puts on their knives. On the um, paramilitary too, that's like one of the winning features for me. So you'd think that I would be crazy about this one because it's got that compression lock. Well, here's one thing about it. It's almost a design flaw. I don't know if you consider it that, but I sort of do. When you close that blade, it actually comes really close to your finger if you're uh, operating that compression lock when, as you close it. It's hard to, a little hard to describe and show you, but that blade really does come right to the edge there. And if your fingernail is kind of stuck in there, it's going to catch your fingernail every time. And I actually got a few marks on my fingernail. I don't know if you can see them anymore. Got a few marks on my fingernail earlier from opening and closing this knife. 
using the compression lock. So, is it a total deal breaker? I don't know, I'm still not sure. I might be, I might put this one in the category of wishy-washy. I'm not in love with it yet. It's a great knife, but I don't know. Seeing that little downside, I'm not so sure I'd buy this one. Ben, I, I like the size. I, I really do like the size on it. It feels good in the hand. Um, for me, I mean, it's, I, I'm not in love with the design of it. Um, honestly, like, I, I like a little bit more in the hand. You can kind of see the grip there. Um, I, I would like it to be, I don't know, a little bit more to hang more, on, a little more, more real estate yeah. in there. And that's pretty thin. I mean, we're talking three quarters of an inch, half inch on that Yeah, yeah. That width right there. And so for me, I, I prefer a little bit more girth mm -hmm. in the handle. Um, Considering that you're already getting it with the blade, you yeah. know, it's like the, the blade size, as far as that, the girth of the blade, yeah, you're absolutely. not going to get around that. So you might as well add a little bit more material to that handle so that you've got a, I don't know, sort of something more to grab onto, as you said. The other deal breaker for this one, for me, is the price. Um, 137 mm. um, Very cool design. It looks great, but it is a little expensive. And, I mean, when you're... I, I am not making bank, despite what people think <laughs> here at Blade HQ, but I, I have enough to buy cheaper knives, and as far as design and preference, this is not going to get $137 out of my personal pocket. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the bottom line there. That's a personal opinion. If you like this yeah. one, definitely buy it at Blade HQ. We've kind of been emphasizing all along, it really is personal preference. A lot of folks just love the look of this knife, and when they get it in hands, they're in love with it, as opposed to Ben and I are kind of a little more wishy-washy about it. So if it's your personal preference that this is the knife for you, for all, by all means, head over, to, head over to Blade HQ today and pick it up. Now, here's one that I've got actually a lot of requests to look at and review, and this is the Spyderco Manix 2 XL. Now, it's, again, back to materials, quality, workmanship, no issues whatsoever with this knife. S30V steel, that's awesome. The G10 is adequately grippy, maybe extremely grippy depending on your, your preference. The Recon, Recon 1 by Cold Steel certainly has a, a more grippy surface, so bear that in mind. However, um, as I said, so many nice things about this knife that a lot of folks are um, looking at it and are very turned on by it and want to pick this one up. Because, hey, it's everything you love about the Manix 2, except it's a little bigger, right? What's not to love about a bigger knife? Well, that's exactly what I don't love about it. I actually don't like the bigger size. One of the deal breakers for me is the pocket clip and the position of it. You see how much will stick out of your pocket there? I prefer to be a little low profile with my everyday carry blades. So knowing that I probably wouldn't carry this one, hardly ever, it's just not worth the money. Um, and again, it's 120, 130. 105 is what I just looked Okay, 105. And that's not a bad price either. You know, the, man, the standard Manix 2, you're looking in the 80 range, I think. Yeah. 70, 80 range. So uh, for the upgraded steel and the extra size, you know, the price is, is good. But again, it comes to a personal preference issue for me, and it's just a little too big. When we fold that thing up, our girth and pocket, the, the width there is a little more than I like to take. It's more so than you get with something like the uh, Police G10 um, and most of the other knives here on the table. Uh, so it's just, it's just not really doing it for me. A little too much size, a little too much weight, and a little bit up there in price. But again, great quality knife, and it suits you. if it suits your preferences, by all means, go pick it up. It's a high performer. We did a field test on it one day, and it, it does really, really well. We did it with uh, Sherman. Oh, yeah. Um, and he loved it, man. But again, for him, the big knife is, is what he's looking for. This is too big for me, mm -hmm. for everyday carry. Um, it's just, yeah, I'm a small knife kind of guy. Right about three inches is a good spot. But uh, cool knife. And an S30V on it, psh, Hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, if if you are a big knife kind of guy, this is a great EDC. Absolutely. Um, just not personal preference for me. There you go. So, moving on to one that's going to get a lot of you guys upset. Here's Scott and I disagree on this one. <laughs> Here is the Sog Flash Two. Now, the Sog so Flash snappy. Two. It is. It's way snappy. It feels pretty good in hand, actually. And you know, everything that I didn't like about the Flash One is a little bit better in the Flash Two. 
I still am not in love with this knife. Do you carry pocket clip? Well, yeah, do you carry pocket <laughs> clip, big win. Snappy spring assist, big win. All state steel for this price. Maybe that's okay if we had a G10 handle and better construction. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually hitting on the construction of the SOG series. Uh, in the knives that I've had by SOG, I've uh, had for a little while a, an, an Aegis, and I also have a Flash 1. And I'm just not crazy about the construction of the knives. They've all had a little bit of play in the blade. This one has some slight up and down and some slight side to side. Now if you went through and looked at a hundred different Flash 2's here, you probably would find one that has less of that uh, motion. But all the ones I've held and played with have that kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it rickettiness, but you know, there's a little bit of play there. Then considering that uh, we've got kind of a Zytel handle that is sort of grippy, it's kind of nice. The uh, girth in pocket is a little bit wide. It's actually right up there with, look at that, the uh, Recon 1 by Cold Steel. Now it's certainly lighter weight, and that's a good thing, but it's still a little bulky in width. Uh, kind of, it's right about where I, my, yeah, kind of my upper it, limit it width. Here's, here's a comparison to a Benchmade Mini Grip. Okay. So you kind of get an idea there. Yeah. A little thicker than the Mini Grip. Okay, yeah. So, not a lot of concerns about the ergonomics. The carry is okay. Uh, the steel, again, is good. Uh, for, for the price, I'm just not crazy about the construction. I just have not been crazy about how well uh, the SOG Flash series and Aegis series are put together. Some of their other knives, I actually want to investigate some of their other knives because they're pretty attractive looking to me. But uh, the, the Flash series, the Aegis series, just have not been crazy about them. Personal preference here, and a little bit of critique on construction. Any other thoughts on this one? My thoughts on this one, I like how they're so light. Um, and that, that might be part of what you're complaining about as far as construction goes. The yeah. um, Zytel handles on it, just it doesn't have a lot of weight to it, but you're getting a lot of, a lot of blade. I love deep carry pocket clips. That's one thing I wish my, my Delica and my Mini Grip had is a deep carry pocket clip. I don't, I don't like flaunting that I'm carrying a knife. Mm -hmm. I love how they're so snappy. They are just, bam, very, very snappy. I don't own one, so I, I can't tell you exactly as far as use, but I do like the, the design in hand and the weight, deep carry. There, there are things that I really like about the Flash series. So mm -hmm. I haven't purchased one yet, so that tells you one thing, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Why haven't I purchased one? I don't know, Ben. You love it so much. I haven't purchased one because I'm a married man. There, that okay. is why. <laughs> married man with kid. But I, I do like it. I might have to go on my list. Okay. We'll it's, it's on Ben's list, we'll and it's probably it. on yours. That's fine, guys. You don't have to agree with me or Ben on any of these, uh, any of the ideas we're talking about here. Now, this is one that might really hurt your feelings. It's the ZT0561, 0561, as it says. Yeah. The Rick Hinderer design, and now this knife is really, really cool. I, I, there's a lot of stuff I actually love about this knife. Okay, uh, just aesthetically, it's gorgeous. You know, I love that uh, coyote brown sort of G10 handle scale. Man, that's gorgeous looking, isn't it? It's beautiful. The titanium, man, that's real nice. The deep carry pocket clip, dude, almost everything about this knife has just got me going, yes, yes, I love it. LMAX steel, that's something I want to try out. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a ZT, so it's going to be built like a tank. It's a hinderer design, so it's really well engineered and designed. So we're looking at you know, a fantastic knife overall here. Some of the things that turn me off on it and are holding me off from buying it are probably number one price. 260. 260. 260 for this. Now you're getting your money's worth for 260, absolutely. But it's still 260 bucks, man. You know, that's a lot of money. And uh, so construction is great. You know, price is, is adequate for, is good for what you get. And, and that's something that, you know, we can kind of argue back and forth about. But really, it's, you're getting a good bang for your buck. American made, titanium, steel. I mean, it's, it's all there. It's the whole American yeah. package. It's everything you want for 260 bucks, but it's still 260 bucks. Oh, yeah. Then at about six ounces, it's also a little bit heavy, and it's also a little bit big. Okay, let's hand that, let's put that next to your griptilian again, because you this is like the mini griptilian is like an, an ideal EDC for me. Okay, 
I love the size. I love the weight of the griptilians. So when you uh, compare something like this to a griptilian, I mean, we're, you know, it's, it's like apples to oranges for sure. Yeah, I mean, but we're still talking about knives you might carry on a daily basis. This is way too big for me. I'd never carry it. It's too yeah. heavy. Um, that said, I'm excited about the new ZT line. We just saw a SHOT Show. I am. 770, they're, they've basically taken their great designs, their great innovations, and put them in smaller packages, which is exciting to me because I'd never carry this. It's, it's too big for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm way stoked about those yeah. knives, actually. And I, can't I think wait sub to look $200 range is where they're going to be, too, so that's oh, exciting. Gosh, man. I mean, that's so we're looking at, you know, um, what is this, 0, 300 versus 350? I think it's so, yeah. sort of like that with the hinderer. Yeah. So the 300 is way too big for me and way too heavy for me. But then you get down to the 350, you get a lot of the same quality of design and construction for less money yeah. and a more carryable package. And that's kind of what we're going to get with, what was the number again? The 770, and okay. I forget the other numbers. but uh, Some of the other uh, upcoming ZTs that are based on Rick Hinderer designs. Those, those are kind of going to be the more edc versions of this knife, and I'm way excited for those. The, five, uh, the 0561, on the other hand, is just a little too much for me, both in price and in size. Okay, last but not least, here's one that I actually really, really like in hand. And this is the sequel by Benchmade, the uh, 707 sequel. And I tell you what, man, I've been looking at this knife for a long time, and I've been really seriously considering picking it up. There are a few things stopping me from doing it. And we're going to get into those. Uh, but let's talk about the quality of it at first. So aluminum um, scales here with a little bit of uh, is that an insert. I think it's kind of a, a grippy insert right there. It does a little bit for you. It feels nice. Of course, a good Benchmade pocket clip. I think that it carries adequately deeply for what it is, for the size that it is. I love the axis lock, 154 cm steel on that blade. This is the serrated one. And I don't, I don't mind serrations on Benchmade knives. I, I'll usually go with no serrations, but that's besides the point. Um, really, there's almost nothing I don't love about this knife. Almost nothing. It's just, it, it flies out. It feels really good in hand. It's a great little EDC knife. Good, good size. So why shouldn't I pick up the 707? Well, it comes down to one, one factor right here. And that's price. 136 to bucks. 136 bucks. Versus the mini grip. Versus like the mini, yeah. Versus the mini grip, it's 70, maybe 80, depending on what you, okay. uh, which version you get. Guys, this is essentially, let's get them right up here close. Yeah. Essentially the exact same knife. Knife, exact same steel. Yeah. Doesn't have the, the aluminum. Open. I was, I just got this mini grip around Christmas time, and uh, the reason I didn't get the 707 was a price. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it. Um, it's thinner than the mini grip. You can kind of get the, the profile there. Mm -hmm. Just slightly thinner. I like the aluminum axis lock and everything, but uh, it came down to price. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, I'm a poor boy, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, would I love to own it? Absolutely. Yeah, and let's just give one more close look at those two blades. Yeah, well, mine's probably nasty, dirty, but. But look how comparable they are. They're virtually the same knife, yeah. virtually the same blade, and they are the same steel, 154 cm. So, I mean, what Huge advantage? Huge price difference. Huge price difference, and what what added advantage do you get with the 707? It's aluminum, man. It's aluminum. Looks cool. <laughs> Street cred. Again, there you go. It's I guess it's looks. So if that's really important to you, and if that's your personal preference, you're like, no, I gotta have it because of that aluminum. Okay, good, great. Go for it. Personal preference wins, and it's all you. Go for it. For me, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Ben as well, <laughs> I think we've already nailed this down. But for us, the Benchmade is a, or the sorry, the Griptilian by Benchmade is a better buy than the 707. So that's the one thing that's held me off from buying a 707 sequel. Great knife, price. If you got the money, if I had the cash, I'd buy it. Oh, it's totally, dude. I'd buy it. If I had the cash, I'd just throw around, and I'm like, what am I going to do with all this cash? <laughs> Big mountain of cash in my house taking up space. What am I going to do? I guess I'll get some more 707 sequels <laughs> down at Blade HQ. But since until that happens, you know, I, there's a lot of these knives that are gorgeous knives that I would love to have in my collection. I probably wouldn't carry, but I'd still love to own that um, are probably just not going to join my collection anytime soon because let's all face it, guys. Money is limited for everybody. You know, resources are limited for everybody. We have to make choices on what we're going to buy, and we generally make those choices based on what we need and 
what we can afford. I think uh, the discussion of what knives to buy and why is, is super important because everyone has their personal preferences, everyone has their budget range, um, and everyone's going to buy something different. That doesn't mean that these knives are bad. These are great knives. It's just there's reasons why you would or wouldn't buy them, and I think that's important to And you all know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Singing to the choir. Here. Yeah, we're preaching to the preaching choir. Preaching to the choir. Sing to them, too. We're singing to them, too. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks very much for watching this again. If this turns into a kind of a heated discussion down in the comments section, I understand. If you're talking about some knives that you might really love here, that's totally fine. But we're just kind of talking about personal preference here and some of the limitations of finances and so forth. And, you know, some of the, some of the things you might use to make your decisions. And, again, this was kind of sparked by some folks that were uh, making some requests and saying, hey, late Boy Scout, check out this knife, check out that knife. And I got multiple requests on some of these. So I wanted to kind of answer those requests at the same time, tell you why I probably won't be buying and reviewing these knives. Well, that's all we got for you today. Thanks so much for joining me. This is late Boy Scout. Ben from Blade HQ. <laughs> and we'll see you guys later. Take care. Do you want me to dance while you? We could do Ben Ben Harlem shake. That would have been. <laughs>